Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Gabriel and today we'll be painting Reek. Reek. It rhymes with bleak. So for the various colors I'll use uh, when painting the skin, we have a Kisla Flesh and a Bugman's Glow, and then I just mix those together for kind of an in-between tone to blend them. Then I used a Royal Blue and a Bugman's Glow to create a darker color, and then a black for the uh, deepest shadows, and I made a gradient of those different colors from the darkest to Bugman's. And then, of course, I created a gradient of Kislev all the way to pretty much pure white. Then I'll be using some scarlet and yellow ochre for some final glazes. So I made this harder for my myself than it should have been. I mixed in retarder medium to try and blend the Kislev and the Bugman's really well, and it kind of just broke the paints down, and it, it made me realize I think I need to invest some time and money into finding better uh, flesh paints because really the Citadel paints don't hold up that well to thinning and that sort of thing. And so um, it took too many coats to get a good base coat on. And I mean, they kind of work as a standard layer paint, but when it starts to get too technical, they, they just really, really are a struggle. That's just my opinion, of course. Um, I'm If you find that they work perfectly well, then do it, but I need to change it up. I'm just throwing a simple brown paint just for the uh, little cloth thing he has there. As you can see, the the paint is, is not really covering too well. I think this is like the third coat now, and it's really struggling to to create a good solid layer over it. Um, part of that's my fault because I may have used too much medium, that sort of thing, but really um, I, I just feel like I need to kind of experiment more with paints. I've only used Vallejo P3 and Citadel, and so I feel like there are other paints out there that could serve me a little better. Now I'm just putting a second coat on the uh, rags he has, and it's pretty evident that it's covering a lot better, so did something right there, I guess. And here I'm just throwing on a little um, of a lighter brown color, but this will be desaturated and darkened later, so we're just mapping out the colors right here. Here I'm just using a heat gun to speed up the drying time, but it might be a little safer to use a hair dryer so you don't actually melt your model. At this stage, I'm starting to pick out which areas are brighter and darker. We sort of did that with the uh, base colors, but here I'm just building it up even further with a brighter Kislev. And then I'm uh, using a Bugman's to pick out areas like behind the legs and um, uh, the lower back under the arms, and that's where our flesh color will be darker. Now I'm just reinforcing that brown again with um, a little bit more color, and I'm just using the same for the rags and the, the hair. Throughout the video, you'll see me reinforce areas, and uh, this goes the same for the mapping stage. So I'm just going to go over the highlights and shadows several times just to kind of better blend and define them, uh, making sure I don't miss any spots where it should be darker or it should be brighter. You might think that I'm going too far with the highlight, but really um, it's good to go back and forth because you might find the shadow is too large, the highlight is too small, and you're just trying to determine where you want that the, those colors to lie and that brightness to lie. That's really important when um, you're trying to create an effective look on a model. If, the, if it just looks unnatural, then don't be afraid to change it and reshape it. Here I'm adding in a mix of Bugman's Glow and Royal Blue. 
that's just to create a more effective shadow since adding black is simply not enough. You really want to uh, change the um, warmth or coolness <laughs> of your color uh, when highlighting and, and, and adding shadow simply because that um, really accentuates the uh, difference in brightness and you know skin can be any color you want so just play around with what colors you use to brighten and darken it and it can really surprise you how effective it can be so with the base coat and the um, larger areas picked out we're going to start being more selective of where we highlight and shade so all those um, kind of cuts and striations across his chest I'm going to uh, pick out with shadow and highlight colors and the the, the spine and the ribs um, uh, peeking through his back I'm also uh, starting to select those um, with uh, brighter highlights not only are we going to focus on the sharper areas but the, the smoother shapes like the muscles the uh, joints the um, the knees and the calves that sort of thing all those specific areas um, you can see how uh, for those sharper areas you it's helpful to edge highlight them to kind of build that definition and then for those kind of smoother rounder areas we're just kind of blending that um, brighter color into the top by pulling the paint up into that brighter area so you can see how I'm pushing the paint up as I um, apply to the model You can see how well defined some of the sections of the detail on the back are, especially the spine and the ribs are really uh, popping out because of that highlight we're adding. And that's why it's so important to really um, be careful and pay attention to all those little details. Like those creases on the thighs, um, if they're just blown out with highlight, it really makes the uh, area there look really flat and pretty unrealistic it just seems like um, you know it's very unnatural which it is but when you uh, go back in and really build up those highlights and those shadows and make sure they're well defined it really helps um, the viewers brain understand what those shapes are supposed to be and they can appreciate that Now we're doing some reverse edge highlighting or, I don't know, crease shadowing, whatever the appropriate term is. And so you can see how um, by just adding that little line of dark color, we've really popped that um, shoulder blade. You can see how the muscles and the bones and the chin are all becoming far more defined because of just that little extra highlight we're adding. We're also, um, you know, doing the reverse by, you know, making sure any area that was hit by shadow is, is re-highlighted, just brightening that even further. And that really, really helps uh, define those, all those bones and all that such. Notice how different the model looks as we uh, make those uh, edges pop and we start to really um, build up and maximize those highlights. You can see on the calves and on the leg how um, much different it looks when we actually define those little air edges and we highlight the heel and the Achilles tendon and those upper sections on the calves. You know, it really, really makes a big difference. So, um, if you if you're happy with how it's going you know just maybe do a little more you know it's I could have stopped you know however long ago but you know you just keep keep building up those layers and and keep working but um, I just want to point out uh, quickly that even though um, you might be really happy with if you're really happy with something but maybe the blend isn't perfect, right? Like you define um, all of those shapes like I'm doing here, but you don't have picture perfect. 
if you just put the model three feet away from you and it looks really great, maybe don't mess with it. If you know, like I certainly do, that my skill level isn't up enough to, well, high enough to uh, contest with really exceptional painters, maybe just try and blend it as best as you can, but really don't go too crazy. I think, you know, Uncle Adam made a video about, you know, um, knowing when to stop. And that's what I'm doing here is I could keep working on the model, but uh, what's more disappointing than making a bad paint job is making a really great paint job and then saying, oh, I have to keep working at it and then you ruin it. So just know where your limits are and try and just surpass it by a little bit, you know. Just try and make it that little bit better and hopefully that, that'll work, you know. And hopefully you'll take those lessons and apply it and then make an even better model and an even better paint job. But just remember that even if it doesn't perfectly represent what you had in your mind, doesn't mean it's not um, something to be proud of, you know. section is just going to be uh, me making all my various adjustments to the highlights and shadows and this takes quite a bit of time and this isn't here really to like show you where to exactly place your highlights and shadows because this model can have all kinds of interpretations but um, you know if you want to actually see you know what I'm doing and all the little stages to it then you know feel free to watch it but if you want to just skip ahead and I'm posting the time right now and yeah, so see you for the next bit.
You can see here I'm attempting to paint the eyes, but in the end I decide not to. Um, I feel because of how harsh the shadows are on this model, it wouldn't make sense to have like bright white, um, you know, spots where the eyes are. Um, and I felt like it would kind of be, um, it would have much more atmosphere if the eyes were actually in deep shadow. And um, I just felt like it kind of works better in the end. But um, don't use this as an excuse not to paint eyes. I feel like even if you're not happy with where you are painting eyeballs, I know a lot of people struggle with it. You know, the only way to get better is to do it, you know. So if you want to practice, just get like a piece of old piece of paper or something and just draw tiny eyes on it. You know, maybe start out big, but do smaller and just figure out how to get comfortable with these very, very small areas and then apply it to models. If you want to and you're really struggling and you're unhappy, then don't feel like you have to put eyes on there. You can just kind of leave the that part of the model in shadow and keep it kind of stylistic. But, you know, I think it's really important that you actually get good at, you know, developing the ability to really mark out eyes and do it in a way that, you know, if not perfect, at least, uh, you know, pleasing to the eye. Since we're pretty much finished with the skin, we'll be returning to the uh, rags and the uh, hair on the model. So first, I'm using a lighter brown to uh, highlight those details. And um, for this effect, we're going to be going pretty rough. So basically, you're just laying down highlights. And I'm using the side of the brush just to get those up raised areas. And I'm keeping it very rough. Um, which really matches the aesthetic of the, um, you know, figure. It's not supposed to be perfectly smooth blends. It's not flowing silk. It's it's just like, you know, kind of supposed to be dirty and rough and filthy and and worn. And so by keeping it harsh, and 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 chopped up, it creates that texture. So instead of making a bunch of tiny little dashes, you're what you're doing is by just leaving those kind of rough um, edges you're you're really allowing the um, the paint just to do the work for you essentially so I noticed the highlight and uh, shadow color were a little too separated so I'm just adding this more mid-tone color to kind of bring them back together by not really blending it, but more like um, uh, just kind of adding in um, a bit of like a transition. While I'm working on the face here, I just wanted to mention that kind of the angle and the um, way I painted it reminds me of uh, Bob Dylan's um, The Times They Are Changing album cover. I don't know how long I'll, I'll, I can show it, so I'll just you know pop it out for a few seconds before I get copyright claimed, but um, just wanted to point that out. I thought it was kind of a funny... Uh, funny little thing I noticed. Now that uh, I'm almost done, I'm just uh, making little alterations. Um, this is really nothing more than just slightly brightening something, maybe increasing the shadow somewhere, just maybe shifting the, the color or the brightness a bit. Just very, very uh, small changes. It's kind of hard to show on camera, but the essence is that you might notice something is a little funny, something should be brighter, something should be darker, that sort of thing, and you're just making those changes as you see them. And I'm doing some like scars and things like that, but I didn't go too far with it simply because the model 
is already so well textured that doing more than just like little, you know, discolorations and, and marks would kind of make it just look odd. I think it has enough activity going on without you needing to add that extra layer. Now we're getting on to glazing, and this is pretty much the final touch. So, what the heck is glazing? It's simply just mildly changing um, the color, like a very, very, very slight amount. And it's more effective than you think, but you just have to be mindful about um, how you make your glaze. But applying it is pretty straightforward. So the way I make my glaze is by taking that standard paint, like a, you'd have a thin down paint you use for a base coat or something. You take a little bit of that, you thin it down until it's very watery, and then you take a little bit of that thin down mixture, and then you thin it down even more. And that becomes incredibly thin. Um, it shouldn't be like one part pigment to whole dollop of water but should be very very thin then what you do is you load your brush up with that extra extra thin consistency uh, paint and then you let the water out by just like wiping it a little bit on a paper towel piece of paper whatnot then you run it uh, across something not on the model on the back of your finger or whatever you're going to use but if with that thin down consistency that you've got the excess water out of it just very slightly tints then that's exactly what you want it doesn't run it just sits there and it tints then that is what a glaze is and so to apply this you just very gently brush it on those uh, areas so took uh, the scarlet color and just warmed the face up a little bit but because of how you know unhealthy Greek is you really don't want a ruddy color you just want slight coloration and then I'm using um, that yellow ochre glaze to just slightly warm up the uh, highlights and what this allows me to do is really maximize that difference of having a very dark near black sort of color and then a near white sort of color and then you have a slightly warm white and a, a cool black and then you just pretty much brought them as far apart as they possibly can go and that's your glaze and that's the final touch that's the end of this video i hope you folks enjoyed i certainly did uh, maybe you took inspiration of this and painted an even better model in essence skin is not just beige uh, paint with some flesh wash it's pretty complex but if you break it down into simple steps you can actually create something that's very effective so go out there learn experiment find something that really works for you and then use it until the next one stay healthy stay safe and keep painting